Okay, we retain another integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity. One minus x to the a over one minus x to the b dx. And we have this condition over here that we want b to be greater than a plus one, and we need a plus one to be greater than zero. The reason I thought this was interesting, I was working on some other integrals that look this way. Particularly, I think I was doing, I think I'm gonna do another video on this same problem from zero to one. Because if the integral is going from zero to one, it's kind of in this form where we have something like one over one minus x. I mean, technically there's a b on it, but, but basically it's in this form. This is our formula for the geometric series that we can write this as the sum from n equals zero to infinity of just x to the n. But now for this to converge, we have the condition on this that we need absolute value of x to be less than one. And that's where we have the problem with this one is here x is going all the way to infinity so this is not going to work we can't go directly to the geometric series formula here so what i want to do about this is let's take this integral and we can split it up into two integrals if i have the first one going from zero to one then this would work on this one if i just rewrite it like this and then for the rest of it the other part is just going to be going from one to infinity and then from here what i want to do is let's just focus on this integral right here and if I manipulate this with a substitution, I can get this one to have the bounds going from zero to one. What I want for this is we'll do, we'll do a u substitution for one over x. And solving for x, x is gonna be just one over u, dx, this is just gonna be minus one over u squared du. So we'll go ahead and substitute, just focusing on this one for now. We'll come back to this other guy later. So on this one, what's gonna happen, you plug infinity in here, upper bound's going to zero, you plug in a one, and now our lower bound's going to one. The numerator becomes one minus one over u to the a, the denominator one minus u to the b, and then dx is gonna be all this stuff, minus one over u squared du. Let's take the minus sign right here, let's use that to flip our bounds. So that way now our bounds are gonna match this other integral, right? We're going from zero to one. And to clean it up, I don't really like having the stuff in the denominator. I don't like the way this looks. So if I just multiply by one, multiplying in by u to the b, that's gonna clean up this denominator. But because we have the same base here, I can kind of combine these. So in the numerator, let's multiply in u b minus two. And then in the denominator, we just multiply in u to the b. So when I do this, let's see what we get. This is gonna become u b minus two. Then here, combining these, we're gonna have, this will become u b minus two minus a, I think. Then we'll distribute this one in here, and we're gonna have just u to the b minus one du. Now let's flip the sign on everything. If I just, it's like multiplying in by, basically multiplying in by minus one over minus one, then what I could do is flip the sign here, flip the sign here, get rid of this. And then on what we have left, let's just reorder it. And I'm gonna do a variable change for the definite integral. We can change the variable to whatever we like. I'm gonna change it back to X. So then what we have here, this is gonna become one minus X to the B in the denominator DX. Reordering the numerator a little bit, let's write it as x b minus a minus two, and then here we're gonna have minus x b minus two. And now what I wanna do is let's take this, put it back in here, but just notice now we've got the same bounds and the same denominator. So what we can do when we add these together is we can add the numerators. Okay, so here after plugging back in and creating this integral, all I did was add them together, and all we had to do is just add these numerators together straight across. And now that we have this integral going from zero to one and one minus x to the b in the denominator, we can go back to the geometric series formula. But what I want to use, now instead of using one over one minus x, now what we want is one over one minus x to the b, and then let's just take this and plug it into this formula. So we have the sum going from n equals zero to infinity, and now we have just x to the b to the n. The convergence is gonna be x to the b less than one, but again, this is gonna work. When you have numbers between zero and one, even when you raise them to a power, it's still gonna be less than one. So what I can do is take this and plug it back into our integral. So we're still gonna have this whole numerator here. And then we just need to multiply and then multiply in this series. But what we're gonna do is with exponent properties, I can write this as x to the bn if I want. And this is going from zero to infinity. But then all I wanna do here is let's take all this 
and distribute it inside the sum. And because we have the same base in all these cases, we can kind of add exponents here. This one times x to the bn is just going to be x to the bn. And here we'll just swap the order of the integral with the sum. We can do it because we established the convergence earlier. And now we can just use power rule on everything here. Everything in the exponent is just a constant. So this is going to be pretty easy. But notice when we integrate, if we evaluate at zero, we're going to get all zero. So we're just going to kind of ignore that part. And when we input, after we integrate with power rule, we put in a one, all the numerators are gonna go away. It's just gonna be one to some exponent. So what we're gonna be left with after doing all this, we're just gonna have the sum, this one's gonna be like adding one to the exponent, bn plus one, then this one, then this one, same kind of thing. And so now after integrating, let's just deal with this series here. It's a little complicated looking. So let me clean up the board and we'll just see if we can evaluate this. Now for the sum we have here, just notice we have a b on the n everywhere. Here, if you distribute it in, you still have a b value on the n. So what I want to do is just factor a 1 over b out of everything. Now that I factored the b out, I just kind of reordered everything to clean it up so we can see the n's. And then what we notice here is this is basically in the form for the digamma function. It's just a little messy and we just need to kind of manipulate it a little bit. So now we have our series expansion for the digamma function over here to the right. But now just notice this formula right here, this is exactly the same as this. I just used a different variable. The reason for doing this is we don't have anywhere in our problem, we don't have this n plus one value. We could kind of create it and force it in there, but it's actually, I think it's kind of a little quicker to just do it this way to kind of create a different formula. So if I take two copies of our series expansion for the digamma function and just subtract them, what happens is the n plus one terms cancel out. Also, the euler mascheroni constant, those are going to cancel out as well. So that's going to give us a formula subtracting two copies of the digamma function two di with two different inputs. So what we end up with is a series expansion for the digamma function, but with two different values, two different inputs. And then we have something more like what we have here, although we don't just have two things, we have four things. So we're going to need like two copies of this formula. And that's making me think I made a mistake somewhere because there should be a minus sign in here. So I'm gonna have to go back. I don't know where I made the mistake, but I brought it forward. So this should be a minus sign. And so what that's gonna allow me to do, we could break this up into two sums, but using this, the input is gonna be everything here. So using this formula, we'll just bring down our one over B. This first part, notice we're swapping the order here. We have S then Z, and then we swap them here. So for just this piece right here, this is gonna become digamma of this part, a plus one over b, minus this other part, digamma of one plus b. And then doing the same thing on this part, think of this, we can do, think of this as like a second sum, same exact idea, we'll have plus digamma of one minus one over b, minus this piece, digamma of one minus a plus one over b. And then here, all I want to do is just reorder this a little bit. So I'll start with, let's start with this one. So we'll have digamma of one minus one over B minus digamma one over B. Then let's get this piece, but let's, let's um, reverse the sign on it. So I'm going to do it like this. We'll have this as minus digamma one minus A plus one over B. And then all we have left is this piece right here. So let's bring that one in. And the reason for reordering it is now this one and this one are both set up to use the reflection formula for the digamma function. So we have this reflection formula right here that we can use on it. And then in each case, see our input. Here we'll have 1 over b. Here we'll have a plus 1 b as our input into this formula for the z value. So when we do this, let's see, we still have the 1 over b in front. Then here on this first one, we're going to have pi cotangent pi times one over b, we'll write that as pi over b. And then for the second one, this is gonna become pi cotangent pi times a plus one over b. One simplification, we can just factor a pi out right here. And so for my final solution is we just have pi over b cotangent pi over b minus cotangent pi a plus one over b, and that's it. So as you can see, your solution might be kind of messy depending on what your A and B values are. If you've got some simple A and Bs, like we know where we can find cotangent, like when we have like three, six, four, two. So I think a very simple example where this is gonna work is let's say A equals two, 
and b equals four, that's gonna meet this criteria here. Because, I mean, now this is gonna be an integral that you could do without the formula, of course, because this one's just gonna be one minus x squared, minus one minus x to the fourth. Because then using difference of two squares on the denominator, you're gonna end up with just dx over one plus x squared. But that's just gonna be arctan, arctan evaluated at infinity. This is gonna be pi over two. So if I plug this into the formula, plugging in four, we're gonna have pi over four, cotangent, pi over four, minus cotangent. A plus one is gonna be three, so this is gonna be three pi over four. So then cotangent pi over four is just one, minus cotangent at three pi over four is minus one, minus minus is plus, two times pi over four gives pi over two. And so of course you can try different values, but like if you tried five and seven, you're not gonna be able to reduce it, or not nicely probably, so then you're just gonna have something like cotangent pi over seven left in your solution. Okay, there you go, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.